If you're not already aware, Biomutant takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where humans are no more, and thanks to the pollution left behind, the animal life has mutated and become sentient. One of the big contributors to said pollution are the nuclear plants scattered throughout the Biomutant world. These locations are known as Bionucleus. Each of these locations are distinguished by their sectors. For example, Bionucleus 10K or Bionucleus 8C are in Sector 10K and 8C respectively. Now you may be asking yourself, why is any of this important? Well, each bionucleus location has an underground area that houses a mutation spot where you can spend one bio point and mutate your character, allowing you to change the way they look. The big problem is that each of these bionucleus locations exists in an area where the radiation is so bad you cannot stay there for very long without taking damage. The good news is, however, when you enter any biohazard zone, a side quest gets triggered and your map is marked with the location of a ping dish. Head to the ping dish location, solve the rotation puzzle, and spin the pink dish until it's pulsating like crazy. Once it is, use it to mark your map yet again. This time, the marker will lead you to the location of a biohazard suit that will give you 100% resistance to whatever biohazard zone that triggered these side quests in the first place. With that being said, I highly recommend spending all of the bio points you collect in these zones on your biohazard resistances. These suits are designed for exploration only, not combat, and as you get higher in the levels, the boss mobs in these areas can easily one-shot you. Like I mentioned in my 20 tips to get you started guide, link to that in the description below, looks are not as important during the character creator screen because you can simply change your fur pattern and colors by visiting a barber named Trim. You can find Trim and his shop at a spot called Spurf Top, located between Urfadurf Outpost and the Flibberdit village, just south of the landmark 7G sundial. It's this little hut hidden under this tree. He's also playing some ice cream man type music from his shop, so if you're having a hard time spotting him, just listen out for the jingles. Now, once you get there, Trim isn't quite ready to cut your fur just yet. He then sends you on a side quest to get him some new clippers. A location called Far Away will be marked on your map. Head out there to meet Juju, the clothing vendor. She's willing to sell you some new clippers, but first, you need to collect something for her. Once your map is marked, head out to the new waypoint, climb up the mountain, and retrieve the item in question. By the way, don't forget to mark the travel points as you go to these new places. Doing this will make traveling back so much faster. After you give Juju her item, she is then willing to sell to you. Purchase the clippers, and before you head back to Trim, make sure to pick up this unique outfit on the stand next to Juju's shop. Once you've done that, then head back to Trim. You can stop here if you want to, but Trim won't be able to change the color of your fur, and he will charge you each time you want to Trim. On the other hand, if you do decide to help him further by collecting a can of spit do, spit dye, whatever it's called. Once you get that can, he'll be willing to give you your first trim for free. Starting the new side quest will mark your map indicating the town of Suburbia being not too far away. The Spit Dew can is in the underground area under the colorful, broken down building. It's pretty hard to miss. Once you've collected the can, head on back to Old Trim to receive your free cut and color. And that's it. If you guys would like for me to cover any other guides, please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and stay tuned to ICE TV.